Hey, and welcome to Wrestle Style Fan Edition. Uh, this is your host, Douglas. Uh, we're here this week with an exciting guest, and we have a special guest co-host this week, since Joyce isn't with us, uh, Matt, who also is on Twitter at GarbageFan97. Fan is that correct? <laughs> oh, 98, um, yeah. Um, okay. Obsessed with the band Garbage, if you've heard of them. <laughs> Yes. Oh, oh yeah. That's really definitely, awesome. definitely follow him as well. And then uh, we have the amazing, talented Thorn Forrester, otherwise played by Windsor Harmon. Welcome, Windsor. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Great to be with you guys. How's it going? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. I they like the band Garbage, today. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Very long day. Really? They, they got a concert, a concert in L.A. in a month. So. <laughs> Do they really? Go. Oh, I love yeah. Garbage Man. <laughs> yeah, great band. Um, yeah, it's been a long day. I'm doing all, uh, redoing, uh, I went back and looked at 16 years of scenes that, you know, one of our producers, uh, will mark in a book, um, shows that are outstanding, you know, that we can use for Emmys and stuff like that. So I, I went through and went downstairs in the editing room and looked at, at, uh, all the old scenes and stuff. I mean, all the stuff from when Darla died, from, uh, the scenes where, uh, uh Thorne was, uh, with, Brooke on top of the bed, and then Macy came in, and Brooke was hiding under the bed, and Macy tried to seduce him on top of the bed. And one thing that's really funny that people don't know, you know, I get paid to do that, by the way, guys. Um, <laughs> one of the things that happened during that, uh, during that, 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 those scenes was that, uh, you know, Kelly is a very big, uh, uh, loves horses, has several horses, and, and does long distance races, like 100 mile races and stuff. Very, uh, a skilled rider. And, we had shot the scenes the day before, and then she had to go underneath the bed. She comes back the next morning. It's a direct pickup. She has fallen off her horse that morning and broke her hand. So if you oh. saw these scenes the, the first day, you can see her under the bed with both her hands, and you come back the next day in the next scene, and she's got a cast on her arm. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> caught that. I, I didn't even catch that either. Wow. Yeah, no, a lot of people didn't catch it. But I, I was cracking up today when I saw it. So. <laughs> Brings back memories, I'm sure. I wish I could. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you the memories that it, that it brought back. I mean, it's just all the stuff. And all the hair uh, that you had. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've kept mine pretty short, but Kelly went from long to really short. She had very short hair. And I didn't even recognize her at first. I thought it was Darla when I first saw it. <laughs> yeah. But it was Kelly, because Kelly had cut her hair before we went to shoot in Venice, uh, where I proposed to her over there um, in front of the Rialto Bridge in, in Venice which was a hell of a trip. Yeah. Can you tell them that American fans want some DVDs? Of <laughs> They haven't released anything in America of the old episodes. but Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why they haven't done that. Because um, I went to Belgium. Uh, I was over in Belgium, and then I went down to uh, Amsterdam, and we did a uh, – me and Hunter and uh, Ashley Jones uh, went there for – we were gone for a couple of weeks promoting the DVD releases and everything through Amsterdam and Holland, and uh, they've been doing very well. I don't, I, they just haven't put them out here, so I, I don't know. I know that you can, I think you can go online and get them. From, uh, I've got them, but you have to have a player that will play it, that region. So. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's that's difficult. True. It's and not it's, easy. It's, and I'm sure it's in a different language as well, because we're dubbed in quite, you know, 140 languages. So, I speak yeah. 140 languages. <laughs> Is it wow, fun to watch talented. yourself with the other <laughs> language? It's pretty weird to watch yourself. I, we were watching some scenes today. I was up in the makeup room jacking around with Moss, Ron, and um, a couple of these new kids that we got. And uh, there was a scenes with me and Donna when Donna was trying to seduce me to get back at uh, Stephanie, and it was in German. And uh, <laughs> we were all cracking up because it's so, I mean, when you watch it, they are so good at dubbing it, these actors that they hire um, and they, you know, they're they're also very famous. These actors that do our voices, um, and uh, they they do such a great job. It literally looks like you're actually speaking German or you know Spanish or Italian. I love French. I really love, um, but it, it's really amazing. As a matter of fact, the guy who dubbed Rich for 22 years or 20 years died, and it was a Big, big uh, deal. It was in all the papers and all the magazines and everything all over Europe that who is going to replace the Boys to Ridge. It was a really big thing because, um, you know, you get used to hearing it, you know, the guy that was playing Ridge, and, and well, they found somebody that uh, sounds just like him, thank goodness. But it was a 
we were laughing about it because it was, I mean, they made a big deal out of it. <laughs> I was just at a fan event for uh, some of the Young and the Restless cast, and Sean was huh? there who played Deacon on Bone the Beautiful and Young and the Restless, and he was yeah. talking about the same thing about the, when he went to Italy, uh, they, mm-hmm. they, he heard himself being played and, and talk, and it, he, he couldn't believe how spot on Deacon's voice was to his voice, and yeah, uh, it's cool to hear hear that. Yeah, it is. Well, they take it very seriously, um, and which yeah, is great, and, and what's really cool is that I've met a lot of the guys that do my voice, and it's really cool because they're so excited. I get, you know, I I, I do your voice. I'm, I I do Thorn. I'm Thorn. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's really cool, and and it's funny because one of the guys that does my voice in Spanish it is about sixty years old and probably weighs about three hundred pounds. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, you you look at me on camera, then you then you see him. It's really uh, it's hysterical. Uh-huh. Well, we're all beautiful kind of, with the light. Yeah. I guess it kind of sucks though if when you guys change up the actors and stuff, then they. <laughs> They kind of well, you know, you know what's really weird is when, like, when I took over the role, you know, I was up in New York, I just got to doing all my children. When I took over the role, um, I came in, and uh, they flew me down and just asked me if I wanted to be a part of the show. That's how I got the job, and I said, well, I, I didn't, and, and the funny thing is, I had never seen an episode of Bold and the Beautiful. I didn't even know anybody on the show. I didn't know one person on the show. And... Um, so I went to CBS and went upstairs and met with Brad and Bill. Bill Sr. was alive at the time and, and Chrissy Dooley, who knew me from playing uh, Del Henry and All My Children. And she, uh, you know, they were looking to replace uh, Thorne and, and they wanted to make some changes with him. So Christy had mentioned my name to Brad and they, he saw some stuff, flew me out here. And, and I, just, I just packed an overnight bag, got on a plane, got there. <laughs> And he said, how would you like to come out here and work with us? And I said, well, it's definitely something we could talk about. So I uh, said goodbye, was in the office for about 20 minutes, got in the car, was headed back to my manager's house, and I uh, got there and called him. I said, yeah, it went great. But I said, you know, they were talking to me about uh, working with them. And just as I said that, uh, the uh, secretary for the, my manager comes online and goes, Conrad, it's Ron Weaver from Bold and the Beautiful. And he just hung up on me. So I'm at his my his apartment walking around for 30 minutes going, what the hell is going on? He calls me back and he goes, they just made an offer. We're negotiating a contract. And I went, what? <laughs> so I, I started work two days later, never went back to New York until, until the Emmys. I had to have somebody move all my stuff out from New York. And uh, so <laughs> I go in, my first scene is with Macy in my office. We're having Chinese food. And uh, we're, you know, we're a good three weeks ahead of schedule, right? So I start watching the show, and I'm watching Jeff Tractor. And then so, you know, on Monday, Jeff Tractor's in there, and he's kissing Macy, who was playing Thorn at the time, eating Chinese food. And then Tuesday, <laughs> I'm kissing Macy, eating Chinese food, and it says the role will now be played by the Windsor Harmon. And it just goes directly from him to me, eating Chinese food, kissing Macy, all in <laughs> back to back. Oh, it's the craziest thing. Was that was that difficult to take over another role? It was extremely like difficult. Yeah, it's extremely difficult to step in and take over a role because, first of all, the, you know, the role had been played for seven years. It, the character had been developed, um, and, and you don't get the opportunity to go in and to really develop the character yourself, and, and that's one thing that I, I love. I, I The thing about as an actor, you've got to do your homework, and Brad Pitt said this the other night. I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and was watching the actor's studio, and he was talking about that, is that you've got to do your homework. And when you, but when you take over a role, the homework's been done. I mean, they, you know, the, the role is expected to be played a certain way, and I had to go upstairs. I had to get the 10th anniversary book that was just coming out and literally read that thing from front page to back page and to understand every single character on the show, my relationship with every single one, why that relationship exists, and but yet I also you know had to play him in a certain way and you know I, I'm a leading actor and I'm playing a supporting actor on this show and you know I have to follow these guidelines of being second to Ridge always he's you know it's a second child syndrome uh, even though now we know that I am the heir to the throne of Forster um, <laughs> as I call it Forster Creations is the throne <laughs> um, even though I am the true you know uh, uh, first blood of uh, Eric. Forster, um, but there, you know, I had to follow a certain way to play it for the first few years, and it was very difficult for me because I would have to go, wait, that's that's not what this character would do. Um, but 
so what I did was I started molding him after his mother. Because when you're, you know, if you're being the second child, in the second child, and you're not getting the attention, you don't feel like you're getting the love. You have a tendency in real life to gravitate to that individual, and and you want to be like them more. And and it's it, it's really it happens a lot of times when there's when there's violence in a family and a child is being, you know, abused. The child has a tendency to, to cling to the person that's abusing them. Um, so that's where I drew from, and and you know I get my anger from Stephanie. Um, and, you know, don't take any, you know, crap from, from people anymore. And that's the change that, that Brad wanted to make with the character and be able to stand toe to toe with Rich. But you still have to find that fine little line where, you know, you're going to wind up not winning. <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. she wins well, a lot, I guess. Well, um, well, it's a, it's a perpetual complaint among fans that there's not enough yeah. Thorn, not enough of Felicia. Uh, you've been very gracious about it, um, but how can we fans? What can we fans do to get more of you on our screen? You know what? You have to hit the CBS anything. boards. You got to hit the bold and the beautiful boards, the CBS boards, and and stuff like that. Because Brad does, you know, he does listen to it. But um, you know, uh, it, it's not all their fault. You have to understand too. You know, I, as actors, I love you know doing other things and and, and movies and and you know, I do want to you know. I do want to do other stuff. I want to do other shows. I want to do nighttime dramas. I love dramas. I, you know, I want to, you know, there's a lot of shows out there. I would love to do Criminal Minds. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. So it's not just, it's not just them. I'm, um, I'm in a very happy place. I don't work, you know, four or five days a month, which is just enough to, you know, keep me living. It's <laughs> uh-huh, enabled yeah. me to go out and do other things. But, you know, the thing about it is that's, that's my home. It's been my home. I'm not going to another show. They know that, um, and we have a very good, uh, you know, relationship. Um, and you know, Brad, I'm I'm close to Brad. Brad and I have done a lot of things together. We've traveled together and stuff. And uh, you know, I go up in his office and say, hey, you know, I think we should try this and this. And he's he's receptive about it. But you know, the thing about it is, you know, you we're you've got to sooner or later turn. You know, you've got to turn the page. And, you know, we're all getting to the age, you know, you know, Ridge and Thorne and Stephanie and Eric, you know, we've got our, our siblings now coming in. And, you know, they've done a beautiful job with these kids, with, with especially with Jackie and Thomas. I mean, Thomas, I, I look mm-hmm. at him on set and Jackie, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name, Adam, uh, who plays Thomas. I look at those two, and then I'm sitting here, sitting with Ron and, and, and Hunter, or Ridge Taylor, and it, I, it's, it really looks like they're kids. And it, yeah. it's funny because the, it, people don't realize how how we get along there. If you could, if you could ever come and be a fly on the wall and watch us, you would literally, you could have the show would be more successful if you shot us behind the scenes <laughs> and put that on the air instead of what's airing. I'm telling you, you would have the biggest show ever. Although we are the biggest show ever anyway, but it, it would be a, you know yeah. we we'd be running well, neck and neck. On the topic of the kids that they're bringing in now, the young Caroline. But oh, yeah. the fans have been waiting for Alexandria to age, like, desperately. <laughs> when do you, Is that going to happen anytime soon? I, I mean, don't know. I don't even... Air to come in? Like, what do you think her character will be like when she does? I don't something? even... I, I don't even know. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I... I mean, a lot of people are wondering... I don't even know how old she would be. How old would she be? 20? <laughs> <laughs> well, Probably. The last time we started, she was five. If Hope is that old now, she should be right under Hope, you know, by a couple years. <laughs> she should so. be, because Hope is the one that told her that uh, Taylor killed her mother. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she should yeah. be really close so she's in it. that yeah. age range. So, I well, mean, that's in my contract, do, though. She... <laughs> right. That's in my contract. I don't have kids that are over seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're now, waiting for that. I don't, I don't go upstairs, and I don't have kids that are seven years old. <laughs> a lot of people yeah, go upstairs; cool. they never come down. <laughs> oh my God! Um, the fans oh, God. were That's celebrating amazing. last fall when it looked like a vindictive Taylor and Thorne might team up and take down Ridge. There was added yeah. drama, and that we don't know if Thorne was sincere or just playing Taylor. What happened to that storyline, and where do you stand on Thorne's feeling with uh, feelings there? Well, your guess was as good as mine with that storyline. I don't know. Brad changed, you know, uh, the storyline changed, and he went a different route, which happens a lot. I mean, you know, that's what he is. He's so creative, and, you know, he just he gets these ideas, and he goes and goes and goes. And, I mean, you know, it's not easy. I, you know, look, he's got a very difficult job uh, to to 
come up with these storylines every day and write this dialogue every single day and keep it fresh and keep people going. And look, whether it's good, whether it's bad, people are responding, you know. They're responding, and that's the thing. And, you know, these guys know what they're doing, or the show wouldn't be where it is. Um, no, but on the other half, Thorne was 100% sensitive about it. I mean, he's always finished last. He's finished second behind Rich, and now he's looking at, at Taylor. He's looking at Thomas, who got stuck down, you know, down there in the, in the sewing room. And, you know, he's not getting a fair shake, and the kid's a very talented designer um, on the show. Um, and I think Thorne saw that, and it's like, now, you know, Hunter, your kids are being you know, overlooked. They're favored, they're favored over Brooks' kids. And, you know, Hope is not even ready to true blood, you know? Thomas and uh, yeah, well, Stephanie are. Steffi, so. Two questions relating to that. Um, a, is there ever a possibility, because I know people brought it up before, could Hope ever end up being Thorne's kid? Because of Well, that's question. something that has been brought up, and, and absolutely. I think because right about the time that Brooke and uh, Thorne broke up was when Deacon came on. And Deacon, we don't know. Uh-huh. You know, if Deacon is the father that, that the baby or not, because, you know, with her blonde hair and everything like that, Deacon's not a blonde. And Hope has a lot of, you know, it would be, yeah, I think it would be a great storyline. And, you know, I, I see it coming down the road. And I think Caroline is going to bring in some things, too, because, uh, you know, there, I, there's some things, um, the scenes I don't think have aired yet. No, they haven't, because we just shot those two weeks ago. I shot a couple of shows about something when Caroline was first introduced. You all haven't seen her yet, right? No, not she yet. Has not showed up yet. Okay, no. So yeah, well, I can't say, but I I have a line that says something that that you know, being there for sixteen, seventeen years now, I I you know, when they write a certain line, and I I can read into it and go, oh, this could mean something. So you know, <laughs> well, you never know. Also on the takeover, the takeover story, they did have mm-hmm. Amber flirt with Thorne for that one episode. And I was kind of excited about that because I love Amber, but that didn't really go anywhere either. <laughs> he was going there. Um, he was going there. We were going to go there. We did. Uh, uh, Adrian and I had <laughs> talked about it, and it was going to go there. And then he saw Brad, saw all the stuff of, Hunt, of Thorne and Taylor, and he just goes, I love that. I'm keeping Thorne and Taylor together. Um, okay. so, so I couldn't yeah, figure out so, where that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would have been interesting. And then uh, I'll tell you something. I love Adrian, there's one thing about Adrian. You know, she's a little kooky. I'll tell you that. But that <laughs> that kid is uh, that kid's. Uh, she comes in prepared, and she's fun to work with because she gives you so much to work with and tries different takes. And you know, as actors, you know that's that's what you want to do. You want a different take each time because you listen and you you know it, you can you know it gives you an opportunity as we call it leave the ground, which is you know I love to do. It. So I love working with Adrian and Hunters too. Hunters, everyone is, but you know. It is different because Adrian and I haven't worked together a lot, uh, except for you know me bashing her and throwing her out of the company <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that years ago. But. Yeah, but you um, supported her and Thomas. So. I'm sorry. But, uh, you, you Thorne supported Amber and Thomas back in the day, so you kind of yeah <laughs> on her side a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. uh, some of the fans really regret losing. Uh, Darla and uh, we, uh, a lot of fans ask: Are you and Shay still in touch? Do you do you do you also think that killing Darla was a mistake, or was that something that you know she, Shay wanted to branch off to do other things? Or yeah, she did, but uh, you know I, I can't say it was a mistake. I mean, you know, I didn't want her to go. We you never want your your co-stars to go. And, and and Shay and I have been friends for so many years, and she was you know really good friends with my. Uh, uh, my ex-wife and and um, you know she uh, they would she was always over at the house with with uh, her 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 son and her uh, and and Mick um, and you know we're just really good friends we always you know they spent the weekends together and the barbecue and everything like that so Shay and I had this very easy working relationship and as a matter of fact when we first when they first decided to hook us up and everything and we had this huge kissing scene we were both so freaking nervous because I mean it's like yeah, God, I gotta, I'm going to kiss one of my really good friends. So, And Shay was really nervous. I mean, shaking nervous. So she comes to my dressing room and knocks on my door. Comes in and she goes, okay. She goes, I, I want to kiss before we go out there on camera. I want to you know, do it a couple times just so you know I'm comfortable. And I'm like, what are you so nervous? And I'm trying to act like I'm not nervous, but I really was nervous. And I, you know, I'm saying, what are you so nervous about? It's just a kiss. That's all it is. So I grab her and just put this big kiss on her. And she's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and that's how it that's how it happened, and we just uh, it was very easy for us. So I miss working with him because she was so fun to work with. 
really but fun. Who do you think? Yeah. Who do you think is uh, Thorne's true love though? Was it Darla or Macy? Because like you know, Macy and him had that whole thing before. Would you ever like to see Bobby come back too? Um, of course, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, I think Thorne and Macy were the uh, you know were uh, Rich and Brooke. You know, I think Macy to Thorne is Brooke to Rich. Um, you know, Thorne and Macy were always. Uh, together they always somehow you know Thorne left Brooke to go back to Macy and then uh, well, then he left Macy to go back to Brooke and she was killed by Tanker wasn't she and then we found her in Italy somewhere in Gamoye I think <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Portofino, the south of Italy right. that's right in Portofino but she was in Gamoye which was on the other side of Portofino which I remember like it was yesterday because we had to get up Every morning about five thirty six o'clock, and we had to get into this freaking van, and we would have to climb to the top of the mountain, which went in circles all the way up to the top, and then you had to go all the way down in circles to the bottom to Gamoye, where we shot where that watch the water that tower was, the light tower where I was chasing her. And by the time we would get to the bottom, thirty minutes later, everybody was sick, sick from from being in that damn van driving in circles up and down the mountain. I'll never forget that, man. That was a tough shoot, but it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Worth it, yeah. <laughs> that was a great scene. That was definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah, the director almost fell out of the helicopter one time. It was hilarious. <laughs> they yelled, cut, and Mike was leaning over and almost went out of the helicopter. He had fallen right into the Mediterranean. Because oh, we did some beautiful right. helicopter shots, yeah. That was a great time. A, a while back, did not allow the bullet. Um, oh, no, a while back on. at one of the Bold and Beautiful anniversaries, um, you and Susan Flannery did a hilarious spoof of Amazing Race. Um, any interest <laughs> in doing it for kind of comedy? Yeah, we that was fun. That was that was really fun. That was really fun. Casey, uh, one of our producers, helped set that up. But yeah, we did that for our anniversary anniversary show. But I think uh, the 25th anniversary is coming up uh, next week, actually next Saturday. Um, and uh, I don't. We didn't do anything like that. I think we're just going to be very reserved for this one and you know celebrate the silver 25 years. But yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. Me and Susan had a blast doing that. And I remember running and I unbuttoned my pants and they fell down. I was running in those Italian set of Italy on the on the. That was a bathing suit, a little speedo bathing suit, <laughs> running through the park. And there was a lot of people out there that was that saw that. It was pretty funny. I'm surprised they didn't get arrested. <coughs> <laughs> um, even further back than that, you released a country album. Though Thorne uh-huh. used to sing, we've never heard you sing on Bone the Beautiful. Now with Jack Wagner gone, do you think any vacancy there for a musician? You, we could hear you sing in the future, maybe? <laughs> no, Ron and I both don't uh, want to sing on the show. We, to, we do that completely separate. Music is completely separate from, from, the, from the show. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> I left that, you know, I just felt like it was with Jeff Tractor and uh, with Jeff Tractor and, and Bobby had together, and I just felt that it was, it was um, you know, I, I want to leave that that with Jeff. Jeff created that, and Jeff's a fantastic singer, and uh, I just wanted to leave that with him, you know? Yeah, because they were some big concerts back in the day. Yeah, they, they, they did, <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, we were supposed to go, I was supposed to go to Australia and tour, uh, and we had been talking about that with several different companies over there, and it fell through. So like five years ago, it fell through. It was supposed to go to the country music festival over there. So, because um, B and B actually calling me like crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. B and B went into prime time there for a while, didn't it? It was so popular. Yeah, uh, we were. We were in prime time for a while. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yep. That's true, crazy yeah. cool, but. Would you um sit, you brought up Thorne and Donna earlier? Now that Nick is leaving, would, could you see her coming back in and kind of uh, causing problems for Thorne and Taylor? Because I thought I thought you and Jennifer had some great chemistry going on. So <laughs> Jennifer Garris? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, she's pregnant. Well, she's pregnant. Wait a little while. <laughs> no, wait for a good good nine months now, eight months. So. Uh, well, they're hiding it, but. Um, yeah, I loved working with Jennifer Gary. She's funny. She's very gullible, and I can, uh, uh, you know, I I have fun with her because I mean, she just believes anything. She has her and Ashley Jones both just believe. You can you can tell them anything, man, and and get them to believe in it. I have more fun doing that. Um, well, you know, we, I know we have a lot of fun. Hey, you, 
pull some stunts, um, I've heard. What What's your favorite one that you've done over the years? <laughs> My favorite one of all time. Oh, yeah. Favorite one of all time was with Rich. We're on. And we had a long, long day. Um, somebody got sick, and they decided to shoot these scenes. The, 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 uh, I think it was on a Tuesday, and they wanted to shoot all Tuesday scenes, and they wanted to go ahead and shoot Wednesday scenes so we could pick these other scenes up on Wednesday. And Ron and I were like, well, we only, I, I don't learn them until the, that morning. And so they talked us into it, so they gave us like eight scenes off, and we went and started running the lines, and we got them down and everything. But there was one line Ron could not remember to save his life. So we're on set and blocking, and Michael Sitch was directing that day, and we're in Ridge's office, and he's got that drafting table that's up to the uh, to, uh, on the fourth wall. Uh, another, when you walk into his office, you see his desk, and then to the left is the drafting table. Um, and so we were getting our blocking, and Mike said, Ron, when you say this line, I want you to cross to the, uh, or Windsor, when you say this line, cross to the drafting table, pick that up, cross over to the couch, sit down on this line, Ron, when you say that line, you cross to the drafting table, and cross back to your desk on this line, and that's called blocking. That's what we do. And when you see us moving in the scenes, the director tells us, you know, that's where he wants us to go. Unless we decide that, you know, it doesn't feel right on that line. Um, how about I move on this line? And, um, you know, we can do that. So, anyway, uh, Ron can't, cannot remember this line. So during blocking, I noticed that he goes over, and he writes the line down on a pad on the um, drafting table. So I didn't really pay too much attention to it, but I saw him do it. So anyway, we go and we start shooting the scene, right? So I cross to the drafting table, and I look down on the draft table, and there's the line. And it's written. And it's a, it, you know, it's a long line. So I pick the pad up, and I take it with me. <laughs> so I go, I sit down on the couch. We're taking, we're full scene. Ron gets to the drafting table, and there's a pause. And he's facing out towards the camera, and he, he stops. And he turns around, and he looks at me, and he goes, I will get even for this. And they have to cut tape because I, I took his line. He could not remember it. And he wrote it down and I took it from him. So he couldn't, he couldn't remember the line. And then we had to stop tape and go back. Everybody started cracking up because they knew immediately what had happened when he turned around and said, uh, I'll get even for this. So that was one of my favorites of all time. But we do things. We, I've, done, I've done crazy stuff where I had, uh, we were in the swimming pool and, and I, was, I got through shooting my scenes and Ron – and Taylor were together at the time, and they were up in their living room and and, and his and Taylor's house, and they were kissing by the outside. And I put on a yellow g-string bikini, and I came running through the set, not running. I was walking fast, and I went, "Hey, Rich. Hey, Taylor. I'm just going to go to the pool and walk." And they got it on tape of me in a g-string walking, <laughs> walking out on the set. I've done some crazy stuff like that. You got to keep it fresh and fun. So. Oh, definitely. If um, if any show had the, ta- had the talent to sustain an hour-long Bull in the Beautiful would, a one-hour Bull in the Beautiful would also have more room on the canvas for all of you. Is this an old pipe dream for us or that never got fulfilled, or could a one-hour B&B help CBS fill daytime schedule weakness that, with the loss of soap operas? Well, we, ju- we, we just had the, the prime time to do it when they canceled, uh, you know, uh, As the World Turns. Um, yeah. That followed us. We could have taken that thirty that thirty minutes uh, into it, and then put a you know a thirty minute talk show on afterwards, and they didn't do it. So it leads me to believe that I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think the other thing too is is that when you have such success, you know, if it's not fixed, why don't don't if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know what I mean? And we we've, we've yeah. done this, this thirty minute genre. We're the only show that's done it. And it's it's it stayed on the air, and it's the number one show in the world. So I think we got to think about that too. Plus, you're doubling production. You do have to bring more people on. It's a lot more writing and work. And I think that we have this little boutique um, that works for us. And and you know, it, it's a family. You know, we don't work for we don't work for the network. I don't work for CBS. We don't work for a network. I work for Bell Phillips Television. I work for Brad. He's my boss, and he you know, it, it, and it's great. It's because it's a family. You know, we go up, we play tennis, we do a lot of things, and, you know, it's, it's, I don't deal with uh, suits, you know, so I, I just, I, I just feel that they're going to pretty much, uh, I, I don't see us doing it. I'd like to, but I don't see us. Well, on that I also topic, would like to see, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, since you uh, were on All My Children, how, I mean, were you, were you very upset about the cancellation of that, and how do you feel about the whole soaps kind of? 
devastating. Well, I, I, I'm, of course we're upset about it. It's a genre that's slowly being, you know, uh, uh, sinking. And, and, you know, it, it wouldn't have happened if everyone would have listened to Bill Bell during this freaking OJ trial. He went to CBS and he said, if you put this damn trial on and not show the soap operas, that fans are going to learn that they can live without it. And he was 100% right, because when, when this happened, I remember being up and all my children talking to Susan Lucci about it, and we were sitting there, me and her and Michael Nader, as a matter of fact, Michael Knight, uh, who played Tag, we were sitting there and um, watching this thing, and our ratings at the time, we were the number two show, I believe, all my children watched at the time, and our ratings were up into the 12s. I mean, we were 10 and 12s. That's the market share we were getting. We are getting twos right now on the number one show twos and threes. That's how much it dropped. It cut down to half. We lost half of our viewership during the OJ trial and they never came back. And now, you know, you have so many other, uh, so many other options, you know, uh, on television now because of cable that, you know, there's a lot of things to watch and this reality is destroying television as a whole, period. Yeah. You know? Yes, it is. So, I mean, you didn't, there's a lot of actors that, you know, you don't <laughs> like this reality stuff. I read somewhere that the, the uh, ratings are up a half a million over the last year, which is the only soap to achieve this. Um, do you think yeah, we are. that from the One Life, One Life to Live cancellation recently, or is there something else going on to why the viewership went up so much? It could be the cancellations, absolutely. There's only, you know, you've got four choices right now, and that's it. And, and, and there's yeah. nothing else competing against Bold and the Beautiful. Uh, at, no, there's not. There's nobody competing against our time slot right now, I believe, from 1230 to 1 o'clock. I don't think there, there is. Uh, no, not at all. I don't think in any of the markets. Yeah, I don't think we are. I think we're pretty solo. Would you ever consider <laughs> taking Thorn, if it was possible, and going over to Genoa City? For a Absolutely. Story line? Absolutely. I think you I think you would fit in perfect over there. You know, there's a lot of new people there and a lot of people that you could interact with, and I think that would be amazing. I do miss the crossovers. The reason why I'm a Bold and the Beautiful fan is when Kimberlyn Brown came over after being, quote, killed off of Young and Restless, she was resurrected and, you know, caused all those lovely dramas with uh, your family on there. And uh, yeah. she was what got me, got me hooked on there. And then since, then, since Kimberlyn, uh, you know, we've had, you know, Tracy Bregman and uh, mm -hmm. Christian LeBlanc and uh, many other ones cross over to your show. It'd be mm -hmm. great to see someone come to our show, or, you know, the other the other sister show. I would love it if Thorne could come and, you know, maybe have a – I mean, we can't have uh, Bill, Bill Spencer show up because he's yeah, – No, he can't. It'd be too weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd, it'd be nice to see Thorne, though, because, I mean, I could see you, you know, hooking up with Melody Thomas Scott who plays Nikki or, you know, something. I think there would be a lot of fun there. You know, since it's in the family, and it would also oh, yeah. get people who watch Bold and Beautiful only to maybe tune into Young and Restless, and then vice versa. Sure. So that's how I became a fan, and I've been a fan for you know twenty, almost the whole twenty-five years. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that, I would love to do it because I remember when uh, you know uh, Eric Braden and I are pretty close friends because we both are into uh, cars. Um, but Eric came over, and we just had a ball working with him. He loved it. He loved coming over to the BMB because it's so it's smaller and it's just. You know, him and Peter Bergman, uh, Bergman both came over, and they just they, they had a good time. Kelly crossed over once and did a few shows. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I would I definitely would keep that open. I because I know everybody, especially Christian. Christian and I, you know, are from the same same neck of the woods, and uh, we're very close. Um, as a matter of fact, that's called him today because I need to stay at his house when, pretty soon when I go to New, New Orleans for something. <laughs> Instead of well, a hotel. Uh, I guess. I saw you tweet that you were unhappy with your crawfish you had. Uh, what did you end up? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> did you end up going oh. anywhere else after that, or? No, I went home. I was so pissed off. Oh, no. I was insulted. <laughs> and these people, they, uh, I mean, they advertised this for like three weeks. Crawfish boils that Tuesday. So I called everybody and I said, "They got crawfish and everything." So there was about twenty-five of us went over there, and uh, they were like the size of, like, bay shrimp. I mean, you couldn't even peel them because they just tore in half. They were overcooked. There was garlic in them, and, I, and I, I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure they had curry in it, too. And uh, my brother and I just looked at it. I sent, I, I told the girl, I said, don't even bring any, don't even bring mine. Just bring us a check. We're out of here. I was insulted, so. Anyway. 
we're going to have a crawfish boil uh, at my buddy's house where I just talked to a friend today. It's got 40 pounds coming. We're going to get 40 pounds shipped in pretty soon. So they yeah, just teased uh -huh. that. Yeah. Uh, another fan sent a question in. Let me uh, get this question pulled up for you. Uh, soap magazines have called your Super Bowl parties legendary. Do you follow the game still? <laughs> Who are your favorite college and professional teams? Favorite college football team is LSU out of Baton Rouge Tigers, which, you know, we failed to show up in the national championship game this year. And then my pro teams are the, are, are the New Orleans Saints and the Dallas Cowboys. The New Orleans Saints party at my house was yeah, was epic. There was over 450 people that showed up. Um, I had it all catered out of, I had I, I had it catered out of, uh, out of a place called Pochet's Bridge in Louisiana. We had um, eight crawfish etouffee. I had gumbo. I made 50 pounds of, uh, of jambalaya. Um, Lelang, another buddy from Baton Rouge, brought in about 100 pounds of, of uh, red beans and rice. Um, we had crawfish pies. We had three kegs of beer. We had 100 bottles of wine. There were 50 bottles of uh, uh, liquor for hurricanes. And before halftime, every single thing was gone. We had to send people wow. to the stores to buy more stuff. It was gone. We had a live band. We got up and I rewrote the lyrics to Sweet Home Alabama um, about New Orleans, about the Saints, and got up and sang that. That's on YouTube somewhere, I saw it. Um, and it just turned. Then I, then after they won, I got up on the roof and jumped off into the pool, dove into the pool, <laughs> which that's on YouTube, I think, <laughs> somewhere. Everything ends up on YouTube. But it was, it was literally. We got sponsored by uh, several beer companies, and when they came uh, to the house, they came in these trucks and with posters and banners and stuff. And I mean, it looked like a fraternity house. I mean, it had. It had uh, streamers and stuff all the way down the street, tied up to lamp poles, to trees, and uh, they had. Uh, I, had I brought in 5,000 uh, pairs of beads, um, so there was beads everywhere. They painted the trees gold and black. Um, it was just, it was off the chart. It was really crazy, and every neighbor on the street was there. I mean, uh, it was, it was nuts. It really was. It was fun. Wow. But yeah, they are legendary. We've had about five. Five big ones there. Um, uh, well, a few years um, back, you you and Heather Tom biked up the mountain in France. Uh, are you yeah, doing something like this? And tell me, how in the world do you stay in such fantastic shape? Because when Thorne takes I, his shirt off, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's training, man. It's it's you know it's it's a lifestyle. Um, you know, I'm very, very conscious of what I eat. I'm pretty much a vegan, pretty much, a, you know, a, a, a lot, 80% of the time. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I cycle 50, 60 miles. I try to get in 200 miles a week. Um, I'm running weights, swimming, and I do triathlons. Um, you know, it's just, that's, that's, all, that's it. I mean, it's, it's just the discipline of getting up and doing it, making yourself do it, so... But that that deal that I did, I actually got uh, that I bike with uh, uh, with Heather and her uh, husband all the time, and me and him bike a lot more than we than Heather and I do. But um, when I got asked to come over and do this, I went to Belgium first. I was gone for a month, and I was asked to come over and and go and do appearances through malls and all that kind of stuff, and then go to Colnago. And Colnago pre presented me with a bike. And then I had Lucien Van Empe, who was the last Tour de France winner from Belgium, train me in the Pyrenees Mountains for three weeks. And I rode six hours a day, and all I did was train. And then we uh, went down to, to Bodon, um, which is where Mont Ventoux is, which is considered one of the toughest uh, hills, and it's in the Tour de France to ride. And it was. It took me two hours and about 28 minutes to get up this thing, and it... Uh, it, it kicks your butt, and it's also a mind game because, you know, you get to the top, there's no oxygen, and it looks like you're on the moon because there's no growth, and it just, it seems like it just never ends, and it's straight up from a 10 degree, 13 percent grade, you know, you never drop down below 6 percent grade, and you're, so you're just climbing and climbing, and for two and a half hours, you know, just picture yourself being on a stationary bicycle and turning it up as much as you can where you can, you have to stand up to pedal it. Do that for two and a half hours, and it gives you a little bit of a, you know, without oxygen, and they'll tell you what it was. It was the, 
I remember when I got to the top and crossed that finish line in Lucian. It's actually posted on my Facebook where you see me coming across and he's actually clapping. Um, I looked at him and I said, that is, you know, the, of all, everything I've ever done as an athlete, you know, from getting a scholarship and being an All-American out of high school and being recruited by, you know, Bear Bryant at Alabama for playing out of everything I've ever done as an athlete, that was the single most um, gratifying uh, accomplishment that I've, that I've done other than, you know, my son being born. It really was because it it took everything because I, I, I literally wanted to quit probably ten times and uh, just burning. I looked down at several times, and, and, and the muscles in my legs and my knees were bulging. I mean, just with from from blood. Um, and then I remember Lucian coming up, getting lightheaded, giving me a Coca Cola and uh, chocolate, and that sugar just all of a sudden, you know, gives you this energy to where you can keep going. And I drank like three, and I've never drank a Coke in ten years. I don't drink Cokes. I don't eat chocolate, anything like that. But I, I was begging for Coke <laughs> to get up that mountain. It was intense and it was beautiful. It was amazing to ride to the Pyrenees Mountains. There was no, there was no, there was no, there was no cars, nothing. It was just me and the road for for five and six hours. And I would pull into these little towns and squares and, and the water. You, there was actually a picture of it on my Facebook page as well of me drinking water out of these uh, fountains that are that you know come from the top of the Pyrenees Mountains from the snow melting and it's ice cold water. So you come into this little town and get a sandwich and, drink and refill my water bottles up and take off and ride for another two, three hours and do the same thing. And I did that for uh, 30 days in a row. It was pretty, pretty, wow. pretty amazing. Yeah. I lost 24 well, pounds on that trip. Wow, 24 yeah. pounds. Wow. I did. I was rigged. I, 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 I lost too much. I had to come back and get on a on a weight routine and get some muscle back up in my upper body because, you know, riding these, you know, cyclists weigh about 130 pounds, 140 pounds, and I'm normally about 185. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, was, I couldn't fit in T-shirts, shirts, anything. I mean, I really lost a lot of weight. Well, Matt, do you have anything else before we switch it over to the callers on hold? Um, yeah, well, uh, one last thing. You, you brought up your son, which I know you said recently he was going to be on B&B. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what he's going to be doing? He's already aired. He aired during Christmas time. He was with the kid who went in and picked out the, the reef and walked out in the grove. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, oh, he was okay. already on. He'll, he'll be doing other, other stuff there. So I'm just okay. breaking, breaking him in a little at a time with it. He was a little... Uh, he was a little shy at first, but he did it. He was, he how, was fine. How old is he? He's eight. Oh, okay. Great age. Yeah, he's eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, uh, we've got some callers on the whole, uh, online for you, and that's my favorite part of the show is to be able to bring fans close to their favorites. So first up we have is uh, Dorothy. She's called in 10 minutes before the show even started. So, <laughs> Dorothy, you're on the air with Windsor. Go ahead. Hi there. Hi. Dorothy, how are you? Great. It's nice to talk yeah. to you. Good to talk to you. Um, Where are you from? I, I am living in Maryland. I'm an original New Yorker. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah. Maryland. I'm one of your Facebook friends, one of the many. And it's really okay. nice to to get to know you a little bit on Facebook, you know. You, you love these people on your soaps, and then you get to see them a little more as a real person on Facebook. So thank you for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. And I love doing it. I look forward to coming home and, and seeing, you know, all of your comments. And um, it's, it's like, you know, I, I love people, so it's like all these friends that I have are like my friends. And I really see you guys as friends, and I really like communicating with you. So thanks for, for uh, following me. Yeah, you're really positive and encouraging. I like that, you know. You yeah. people have such great energy. I think you must really love your jobs because it just shows in your personalities, you know. Yeah, people, well, you it, Bronk, come on, and he's crazy, and Daniel, and it's just really, it's, Facebook has really, really helped us, you know, get to know you guys, so it's good. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what it's, I guess that's why they invented it, huh? <laughs> People so are afraid to talk on it. To you, um, when uh -huh. did you know you wanted to be an actor? How old were you? Oh, I was in the second grade. And, are you serious? Yeah, I was in the second grade, and I got cast in a play in a, in a musical called The Wells Fargo Wagon. My mother has these pictures. She won't give them to me. I wanted to uh, put them in a magazine because uh, people didn't believe me. But I was up on stage, and we were doing the Wells Fargo wagon singing. And when the play was over, everyone left to the right side of the stage. And 
the people in the audience were clapping and, and whistling, and I was mesmerized by it. And I was only <laughs> six years. I had started first grade when I was five, so I was six years old. I was young. And um, I, I just remember standing up there on stage and just being mesmerized by the audience and, and the clapping and the people. And I wouldn't leave, and I was up there for like three to three to five minutes. And there, my mother has pictures of the teachers on the side of the stage waving me off, and I'm like, no. And I just stood there, and I just was soaking it all in. And I knew, you know, I knew then that that's one day I wanted to to, to do that to entertain people. That is too funny. So how did it evolve? I mean, did you end up, you know, doing theater in high school or? No. You know what? No, I didn't. It's the craziest thing. And I've got friends, dear friends of mine who were theater majors who were just, you know, they just, when they're like, you just, you know, it's just not fair. You know, they majored in theater, theater and you just played football. <laughs> um, I, I we moved out of New, the, my dad moved us out of New Orleans into a little town uh, outside of Dallas called Rockwall, 20 miles east of Dallas. Oh, okay. and. I got into football, and I got into football very heavily and loved it. And I, I you know, I, I always thought in the back of my head that football would be my way to get into the movies, you know, mm-hmm. um, because Brian's song was my favorite movie and, you know, it was about the two running backs from Chicago. Right. Um, so I always thought they would do that. So I got to college, on a scholarship, got to college and everything, and I just remember I called my dad and I said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of getting beat up. i got to get in. I'm taking shots. You know, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm, I, I can't get out of bed in the morning. I'm 17 years old, and I feel like I'm 90. I said, I just, I've lost the love for the game. I want to be an actor. And he just said, okay. And so that's how it happened. I went back to Dallas, and I met someone uh, who helped me. And uh, I started out as a model. That's how it really happened. And I went into an agency. Uh, I remember it was Kim Dawson's agency in Dallas, and the girl, and a, and a makeup artist took me in there. I had met her. Uh, through some friends of mine and wanted to get into it. She said, well, you can start modeling first. I mean, you could do sports stuff. Well, the agents looked at me and said, you would never be a model. You're too big. And I said, well, how big do you got to be or what size? She said, you need to be in a 40 regular jacket and a 32-inch waist. I was in a 36-inch waist and a 46-inch jacket from playing football. And I looked right at her and I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I'm not only going to be in a 40-inch jacket and a 32-inch waist, but I'm going to be at the agency across town competing against you. And I walked out of that office and became a vegetarian, and I ran 10 miles a day, 5 in the morning, 5 in the evening, and was a psycho fanatic about it. And within eight months, I was down to it. So I got into modeling and moved to Italy and did all that, did all that, and then one day woke up and said, I'm done, I'm moving to California. And I moved to L.A., and about six months, six to eight months out here, I landed all my children, and that was 20 years ago. No kidding, huh? 17, 18 years ago, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I won't take any more of your time, but thank you very much for talking. Thank you, honey. You have a good evening. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Dorothy. Bye-bye. All righty, then. Um, any listeners that are listening, we've, we've got people on hold, but you can definitely call in at 347-215-9503. Uh, next up is a super fan as well. Her name is Kenya. Kenya, you're on the air with Quinzer. Go ahead. Hi, How you Kenya. Doing? I'm doing good. Where are you from? Detroit, Michigan. You're in Detroit. Ooh. Yes. I went up to Detroit one time. I got to play on Ford Field, and I went to Barry Sanders' locker. <laughs> he was my – Barry Sanders was who I – was my favorite running back. He was the greatest – and I don't care. I will fight anybody over this. He was the greatest running back to ever play the game. If, if yes. Barry Sanders would have been with the Dallas Cowboys and had the, the offensive line that image – and I'm not taking anything away from him. No way. <laughs> Barry Sanders played without an offensive line. He he was the best. And I think him at yes, Smith would say that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my anyway. question is, uh, who is your favorite actor to, you know, work with on Bold and Beautiful? Who's my favorite actor to work with on Bold and the Beautiful? Yes. Um, you know, I, I have favorite actors for different things. Um, just completely just loving to act and because – in learning, I, I, you know, is Susan Flannery. I mean, Susan's, uh, you know, I, I remember Susan Flannery going out the uh, window in her underwear in the Tower in Inferno with, Robert, you know, Robert Mitchum. I've, I've been a fan of Susan's for many years, and, I, and Susan's just, you know, Susan could easily have won Academy Awards and gone into movies, but she chose not to. She loves living in Santa Barbara and working on our show because she doesn't have to travel and stay. But, you know, she's a phenomenal actress, and uh, I, I, I learn from Susan. I still learn. I'm still a baby in this business, 
and uh, I love working with her. But when it comes to, uh, you know, beautiful girls, um, Kelly I love working with. I love working with Hunter Tylo. I mean, look, I've had amazing, you know, beautiful co-stars. When it comes to getting angry and raising bloody hell, I love working with Ron because we really can have some fun together. So, yeah. Okay. My brother will ask you a question. Hi. Hi. Who is this? Hello, you've been working on the boat and are beautiful. Uh, but what's your name, first of all? Tyda. Say it again. Tyda. Tyda? Tyda. Tyda. Oh, okay. We have a little echo, honey. I'm sorry. I've been there for 16 years. I've been working on the boat on the beautiful. Oh. Yeah. How old are you? Eight. Yeah, see? I have a little boy who's eight. I've been I've been on that show twice your age, let's put it that way. How's that? <laughs> you, you take care, sweetie. Thank you for talking with me. You're very welcome. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Area code three six one. Uh, I didn't get a, I didn't get to screen your call, so I didn't get your name. I do apologize, but your area code three six one. You're on the air with Windsor. Go ahead. Hey Windsor, uh, this is Party Will Willie from uh, Twitter. It's Willie. Willie. Yeah, I'm Party Will on Twitter. This is Willie from oh. South Texas. Oh, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Hey, I got to tell you, I'm a big fan, and after listening to you, you know, because it's good to hear what the actors think on the show and with the writers, and it's really good to hear you have a good relationship with your writers and, you know, your your cast, because sometimes, you know, you hear different members, like, they're trashing each other and all that, and you're not doing that, so that I give credit for that, but I'm enjoying the fact that you're, like, don't, you know, like, give, give, the, give the show a chance because, you know, the writers know what they're doing. They're not, like, trying to purposely, like, push people out. So, you know, it, it gives me a whole new, like, perspective on your show. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, um, if, if besides doing other projects, like, would you ever consider doing, like, a web series, like, for example, maybe The Vanity? Um, you know, to be honest with you, man, I, I, I stopped doing commercials years ago. I stopped doing all that uh, stuff like that. I just, I, I'm, I like the technical aspect of, of, of making, you know, television and movies. Um, so I, I just, you know, I, I, I no, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to. I don't think I'd be interested in that, that, that right now. Um, it's oh, yeah, hard to go from. That's, that's cool. it's, okay. Yeah, it's and just no, hard no, to no, go from the number one show in the world. Huh? Go, what's that, bud? <laughs> I'm sorry. The second other question I was curious is if you could see yourself like two years down the road, what would you like to see for your character? You know, like evolved. Like, what would you what would you see him doing as for Thorn? Well, from two years from now, I'm, just, I'm hoping that we're still on the air, to be honest with you. And, and, and you know, if that's the case, I, I, I'd be glad to do anything. <laughs> I mean, that's our biggest oh, concern worry. is keeping don't these worry. shows on the air. Us <laughs> fans are determined not to kill all the soaps, so you got my support. I'll definitely do what I can to save soaps. Well, we appreciate that, man. Um, you know, I, I, the, the thing about it is I don't look at – I don't look – at tomorrow, um, you know, as far as as an actor and, and stuff, I, I don't even like to look at the scripts. I don't want to know what the storyline is going to be. I like to get it fresh and and it be you know uh, organic. That's the way I like to work. And uh, so, but you know, as long as I'm still involved in the show two years down the road and it's still on the air, uh, you know, that's good enough for me. All right, that's cool. Well, it was nice to talk to you and wish you all the best. Thanks again. You're nice you're uh, you. let me make sure I got the right person. You're party well, right? Yes, pretty well, yes. Willie, we'll okay, I got you, man. There you are. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. See you guys. Bye. You got it, man. Bye, Will. Yeah, he's a he's a loyal listener. He, he, yeah, he's a, he's a loyal tweeter. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, just a little bit about me is before we take the, the last two calls because uh, our time's running out for you. Yeah. But I just wanted to let you know that I've, I've been a fan of – I started Young and the Restless 28 years ago. I, I – I'm 38, but I've been listening. I probably know more earlier stuff when I was a kid. I don't really remember. But uh, for 28 years, I've been very loyal to Young and Restless and, and of course, Bold and Beautiful once uh, 
the whole Sheila switched over to there, I began watching it. And then when I started seeing that the Guiding Light got canceled and As the World Turn got canceled then the AMC uh, got canceled, it's just like, I was like, oh, my gosh, where are these people going to go to go get their, you know, their their, their daily bread of, of soap opera world? You know, this is yeah. soap opera generational from grandmothers, great-grandmothers, you know, moms, dads, brothers. You know, we, we've all grew up with all of the, these, these cast members. And uh, so when I saw this happening, I mean, this is why I started my blog and then I decided to start the, the this this the online show because I wanted to be part of the movement that is out there online to help save the remaining four soaps. So I start watch I started watching Days of Our Lives and I'm trying to get into General Hospital just to to, to kind of know what's going on and 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 I'm working with a group of people on on Twitter and Facebook to help you know let CBS and let Sony know and everybody and, and to that we. We need the we need these soap operas. You know, you 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 can't just take them away from us like this. And you know, right. and and the one and the fans that are 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 no longer have um, the ABC shows. I'm trying to get them to come over to Bold and Beautiful Young and Restless to get you know more fans. And 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 I'm and I'm educating so many people on cast uh, storyline, cast who's who, and I'm trying to teach all these these people you know who these these are so they can just jump right in because it's hard to watch a soap. When you've never watched it before, and it's been, you know, you don't have the history of the soap, and you can go online, of course, and stuff. So I, so I decided to start this to help not only bring the fans to the the talent uh, to show the passion that we have out there for you guys, but also bring the community together as a whole because we only have four left, and with Soap Channel uh, SoapNet leaving this month, that's going to be mm-hmm. one more hole in people's world of soap world. Yeah. So, Sure. So that's my. I'm just one person, but I'm also part of a bigger world that's trying to help save you guys in the future. If we can, if we can do anything as as individuals. Uh, for I example, Melody that. Thomas, Melody Thomas Scott on Younger Restless was kind of written off the show for six months, and the fans on Twitter, we all went together and we tweeted Sony and CBS and the, the Bells and everything, trying to, you know, we need Melody Thomas Scott back, and you know, after months and months, we finally got her back. So the power is there. So it is there. You do it. No, it's there. Absolutely. That's awesome that you guys did that. Yeah. There is a there is a a girl, and I don't know if she's one of the calls that we have coming up. Her name's Pam, and she is uh, she's been retweeting a lot for me this uh, for your show tonight with us, and she's one of the people that are helpful. She was an ABC fan fanatic as well as well as CBS and uh, as well. But we're all just working really hard to help. Save awesome. us, you know what's left, and, and and we're not going to give up. We are. I mean, we want you to not only be there in two years, we want you to be there in five and ten years. You know, that's fine with me. So I can retire there. Trust so. me. <laughs> and and another, that fam, and another thing, Sam just tweeted, "I'm on hold, waiting to speak with you." <laughs> oh, see that way. I just I, see, that's funny. Okay, I'm sorry, I was babbling. I just wanted to give you a little insight about me because I forgot to introduce like wh- wh- why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, no, no, that's uh, awesome, man. Okay, we got much appreciated. That's killer. All right, area code three six one. Uh, you are on the air. Go ahead. Area code three six one. Yeah, that's this party will still. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, keep on listening. I don't know. Sorry about that. Technical <laughs> seven oh eight. I think this is Pam here. It's Pam. Pam. Yep, that's hey, me. Pam. Hey, Pam. Hey, welcome guys. to the show. You're on with Windsor. Go ahead. Hi, Pam. Hi, Windsor. How are you? I'm calling from I'm calling from Chicago. <clears throat> yeah, I know that. You told me that. <laughs> And all the and all these people have already asked my questions that I had in my head, so <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, almost tapped, I'm almost tapped out on questions. But anyways, I listen to you. All right, we used to watch you on All My Children, and listening to you speak right now, you sound just like Dell did. So it's funny how you change your voice on Bold and the Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> Thorn is uh, – Born and raised in Beverly Hills, and you know went to you know Harvard Law School or Harvard whatever. So you can't uh, have a can't have a Southern accent in Beverly Hills. So yeah, no, I yeah. do. Uh, I have to uh, really use a different uh, you know a non-regional dialect when I when I'm playing the character. And you know I slip sometimes. I mean it happens when you really get into the moment. You know think about it. And, you know we do have to pick pick it up sometimes because I, I have a tendency to drop the ings or things like that. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, I like that. I like the fact because it helps me get into to, uh, the character more when I go in and put my clothes on, you know, because you know, Windsor doesn't wear suits. I'm in 
jeans and T-shirts most of the time. So when I go in in the morning and get dressed, uh, it helps me get into the character as well. Did you have to take classes, voice classes for that? Yes, yes. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Oh, Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> I know. I can't imagine because it's such a it's, it's such a southern accent, and then to speak yeah. without it at all, it's not easy for people to do. Because it's so no. easy to pick up the southern drawl, though, for people mm-hmm. that don't even speak it. I know. Well, if I go down to New Orleans and uh, you know for Monte Carlo or something for four or five days, I come back and I'm like, gee, I have to get tapes out and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll listen to them in my car for you know an hour or so just to get back into it because it, it's very easy to to fall back. You know, my son that's in the Marines, he's in North Carolina right now. He just got back from deployment, and uh, uh, every time he comes home to visit, I kind of hear it in him, although he doesn't believe that he sounds like that. Right. Well, we never do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we never do. So if you um, weren't acting, what would you do? I'd probably own a restaurant be a chef, I would think. I love to cook, and uh, I cook all the time, um, um, or maybe a coach, football coach, something like that, I would think. I just, I, I don't know. I just, I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. It's deep in your blood. Yeah, And you're a is. great actor, so we Thank appreciate you. that. I I appreciate that. It's the best compliment I can receive. Um, I love your tweets. I love Thank seeing you. that you hang out with the guys after work and you go, even with Antonio, when you went uh, motorcycle riding. That was great. Yeah, we had fun. We had fun. Do you wear a Pretty helmet? Good. Of course I wear a helmet. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Well, it's a law here in California. You have to wear a motorcycle helmet. Well, that doesn't always stop people either. Yeah. But I'm glad you do. We do. All right, Pam. Well, I appreciate the call, and we'll see you back on Twitter. (laughs) Oh, definitely. I'm sending you a Facebook request, too, because I want to see these pictures. Oh, okay. Absolutely. And we we will keep fighting for the soaps. Trying to get a soap dedicated uh, cable channel because SoapNet is going off the air for soaps on uh, March 23rd, although it yeah, doesn't no. affect Old and the Beautiful, and it's no. becoming Disney Junior. Yeah, so. no, exactly. exactly, it is. All yeah. right, thank you so much for taking my call and answering my questions. You got question. it, Pam. Everybody you got it. take care. <laughs> thank you, Douglas. Take care. Okay. Right. You're welcome, Pam. Bye. Talk to you soon. All right. Uh, there's one last call. Do you have time to uh, to, to take it? Yeah, we have, real quick, though, uh, Genevieve Cottrell tweeted, when are Thorne and Taylor going to get together? Um, they are together. Love them as a couple. We are together. We just uh, uh, haven't been on screen that much. But from what I understand, it is coming. So be patient with us. Be patient. Well, yeah, you, you, you didn't even get to enjoy the chocolate. Yeah. You didn't even have <laughs> <Huh>? the chocolate. <laughs> I didn't even know about that. I had no clue. And then I started getting, you know, uh, messages on Facebook and then I've got, uh, on Twitter and stuff like that. And I called Hunter and I said, what the hell is it with this chocolate fountain thing going on? She goes, you sent it to me for for um, uh, Valentine's Day. And I went, oh. <laughs> so she filled me in on it. I didn't even know it, you know. And that happens a lot because I wasn't in, the, yeah. in, the, in that show. All right. Well, the last call is from uh, area code 563. You're on the air with Windsor. Go ahead. Hello? Area code 563? Okay. Got the radio up too loud. <laughs> yeah, they were jamming too loud. Yeah, oh, well, listening, 563, we, we tried. <laughs> Let me try this one more time. Area code 614, you're on the air with Windsor. Area code 614? Hello? Hello. I heard a voice. Hello? Hello? <laughs> hello? Hello, you're on the air with Windsor. Hello. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on with those last calls. So maybe they don't realize that they're talking. Maybe they called the wrong maybe they or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. I got, a, uh, well, I got something here from, who is this, from uh, Patty Young. 
says, Windsor, I've watched The Bold and the Beautiful since day one. I love you on it. Why don't you play a big part like you used to? Well, <laughs> 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 uh, um, Patty, um, there's, there's many reasons. You know, we, we, we have to, you know, the writers like to, we, we have to re you know, cycle the storylines, get everybody on. Um, there's many reasons. That's not just one. Um, you know, I come and go, and that's where I like to be. So um, we'll see. You'll see me soon. You'll see me soon. Well, I've I have been a thorn. I've been question. a thorn fan. I I've been a thorn fan forever, and I've always just I just yell at the TV, and I you know why is he on more? Because I mean I was really excited for that whole takedown of Forster. I was like, yes, not Bridge and Eric Downing peg or two, and <laughs> I'll, I'll be damned if that just kind of vanished. And I was like, ah. Come on now. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, okay. Well, Sugar Pie from Texas um, wanted to say hi and um, was a big Brooke and Thorne fan. Is is there any chance that that will ever come back up for those of us who don't want Brooke with Ridge? <laughs> and miss, <laughs> miss the good old days when Brooke was with everyone, uh, which was much more fun, I think. But um, <laughs> Any chance of um, Thorne again? What, how does he feel about her? Is he is he angry with her still, or we 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 don't see them interact much? Um, no, we don't. No, I don't think he's angry with her at all. I just don't think that Brad has gone down that road again. Um, no, I loved working with Kelly. Kelly and I had a tremendous chemistry, um, which no one w w no one actually the thing was no one really knew that it was going to be that big of a chemistry, um, and it got you know it was really getting big to where it was you know, could have possibly started taking away from Ridge and Brooke. Um, and that's what you, you know, you can't have that because Ridge and Brooke is what, you know, that's the character from, uh, you know, those are two opposite sides of the track, the Beverly Hills to the Valley Girl, and that's what the show has been based on for since day one. So, you know, you've got, you've got to stay with your bread and butter no matter what. Um, yeah, but they're still but, uh, Ridge and Taylor, so. <laughs> you, we can have both still have Ridge and Taylor. And you could, Ridge could go back to Taylor, and then we can have Brooke and Thorne again and, yeah, that. well, that's you know, it's fine <laughs> with me. I love I love working with both of them. Uh, Kelly and I, I was talking to Kelly today because I've got her. I'm getting her into uh, cycling now. Um, mm -hmm. So she's uh, over our three week hiatus coming up here in March. Uh, I'm going to get her uh, out on the bike and you know start training her and showing her how to ride and stuff like that because she's a good athlete. She loves. She runs a lot and you know stays on the horse and stuff like that. But uh, she's a cool. She's she really cool. I love Kelly. Uh huh. Does she have you on her juice diet also? I know she doesn't no. do anything. <laughs> no, we, no, 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 not all the time. So. <laughs> no, I do not do any juice diet. Which I don't believe in those. I don't think those are healthy for you. Oh man, <laughs> I don't think they're healthy. Yeah. Well, it, it's a. Uh, is there any anything else on your end? Because I don't want to keep you too long. Because I don't. I told you I'd be there for an hour, so I don't want to keep you too long. Because I know you're exhausted. Yeah, I won't stay today. I, I got a couple of tweets from a girl by the name of the. From Australia, I just want to shout out and say hello to her. She sent a picture. She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's a cutie. <laughs> hey, and you're, and you're, you're recently uh, divorced, or is that correct? You're single now. Well, it's yeah, not recently. It's been a while. It's it's yeah, we've been oh, separated for almost five years. Yeah, so yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I it was yeah. more recent than that. Well, it's actually just hit the press recently. <laughs> I've kept it. I've kept it out of the press for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, you you deserve a private life as well. Yeah. Well, we try to, and that's the you know that's the thing that's so great that I love you know about this uh, show as well is that you know we 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 can get up in the morning, we can go to work, we don't get bothered you know, uh, here because we're in Hollywood first of all, so you know there's movie stars and there's people everywhere, so we don't get bothered. And, uh, you know, you go to Italy and we can't get off the plane without having, you know, bodyguards everywhere you go. you got to have bodyguards. You can't leave the hotel. There's people, you know, we had four or 5,000 people outside of the Bauer Hotel when we were shooting in Venice. And I could never leave the building. And it got, after the third or fourth day, it's, I mean, it is draining. It really gets to you. And you, get, and you finally, you get back to the States and you're like, oh, you know, mistreat me. Don't don't treat me like like a celebrity anymore. <laughs> I just want to go to. I just want to be left alone. So you know, you get the best of both worlds from doing the show. If you you know, we always laugh about it. Does anybody need an ego boost? Let's go to Italy or let's go to France. You know, <laughs> somewhere. So it's funny. Well, but, uh, 
Before you go to, I just want to say I've I've met you um, many, well, like five times now. I think the first time was mm-hmm. in the year 2000 when I was in middle school in Frisco, um, and your mom was at this tour with you, Soap Opera Digest tour uh, in Frisco, Texas. Um, and that was out in uh, uh, that was out where in Texas? That was out, out right outside of Dallas. Yeah, I I grew up in Dallas, so uh, yeah, that, that was me and Peter. Was when did Peter? <laughs> was it Peter Bregman that was with me? I don't know if anyone was with you at that particular moment. I don't know if they did two things or, or what. You were I remember that. With my mom. I was out there with my mom. Yeah, she was telling some embarrassing stories about you streaking. Yeah, I remember that very well. <laughs> I remember yeah, that very true. well. Very, very nice. And I, every time I've met you, because I also met you like the Beau Rivage events and the fan events, and you've always just been, been very, very nice. So I just want to say thank oh, cool. you. Because all the actors on B&B have been pretty cool. So. When you yeah, we, we, we're we pretty grounded over there. <laughs> I hope stay you guys have another fan event soon. Um, I love going to those. So Yeah, we <laughs> should. <laughs> All righty, well, we'll, well, we'll let you go was, rest now. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it, and uh, like I said, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I really enjoyed tonight, and thank you guys for doing what you're doing, and uh, you guys uh, keep me in tune with who you're going to have on so I can stay in touch. Um yeah, definitely. Um, there's a lot of people who aren't on Twitter on Bold and Beautiful, so I didn't know if there's you know any way to get any contact information because I would love to have Catherine Kelly come on and uh, you know there's many I, like you're the first one I reached out to, so there's like a whole cast I would love to get in touch with that that aren't quite always on Twitter. So if you're if offline, if you can get uh, any kind of contact information, I'd love to invite and have. Uh, you know, Brooke fans would love love me to have her. They they reached out and said, could you get her? And so. Yeah, if absolutely. Well, I'll tell her. I'll tell her that. next time I see her. I'll tell her all about you guys. But you know, don't you know? Reach out to her like you did to me, and then I'll. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it 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 wouldn't hurt for you to get in touch with uh, Eva Demersian over at uh, Publicity. You know, at the show. Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah, want to give out the number I, because it, yeah, I don't want to give out the number on air so they'll like <laughs> this shit throw a fit. But, uh, <laughs> I can. Uh, I'll send you the number and her name and and uh, and then you can call her and I'll. Uh, I'll um I'll let her know that you're gonna call her and then you know because I know these guys would love to do this it's fun they really would anything to help the show they'll do exactly <laughs> so I'm just a guy trying to help the bigger picture so there I you appreciate go, your fellas. time tonight and I, I thank it. you and I'll talk to you on Twitter and I'll talk to you on Facebook and uh, you got I it. appreciate everything and I'll uh, invite you back later in the year so we can catch up again absolutely I love it man you guys take care again appreciate everything and we'll uh, talk soon. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, Matt, how did did that go? Uh, I think it went pretty good. Pretty good. That was a great interview. Uh, Listeners that are are listening still, uh, there was a couple people I tried to get on the phone, and it didn't come through, so I do apologize for that. If you have any questions for Windsor, be sure to tweet them at Windsor Harmon, and also on Facebook, send a friend request or send them a message on there. We'll have him back later in the year as well. Uh, uh, also, just, a, just uh, since we're done with the actual interview, just a little bit of information for those who may not know. Uh, Joyce, who is my normal uh, full-time uh, co-host, has stepped down due to her work schedule. So I am looking for a full-time uh, – well, not full-time, like a 40-hour week. It's just an hour every week. A uh, full-time co-host to do the weekly uh, co- uh, weekly shows where we just talk about the storylines and dish and talk, take calls from fans and then also be there for the uh, special guest. Uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me. The only other guest that I have uh, coming up that I'm very close to booking is uh, the actor by da- uh, David Lago, who played Rao on Young and Restless. I am working with his agent right now to get him on in the next couple of weeks. We also are going to have Vale Bloom, who was the original uh, Heather Stevens on Young and Restless. And also, I'm very, very close to a date for a 90-minute exclusive with Melody Thomas-Scott, who plays the one beautiful Mickey Newman on Young and Restless. So definitely stay tuned for upcoming uh, dates. And uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming aboard tonight. Uh, Windsor was an amazing guest, and I'm so glad I was able to share it with a big fan like you. Thank you for having me, for sure. No problem. Again, uh, the show will now be posted online, and I hope you enjoy it. And you can also uh, search for us on 
iTunes. So on your iPad, iPhone, i whatever you've got that has an i before it, you can search iTunes and uh, <laughs> RSFE for Restless Style Fan Edition. Type that up. The only one that comes up is us. Hit subscribe, and you'll never miss an upcoming show. Thank you so much, Matt, and thank you, listeners, and thank you, callers. Thanks, everybody, and we will check you next time. No bold and the beautiful music on this because I haven't had a chance to upload it, so we'll just say goodbye. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye, Bye guys. Now. Thanks for listening. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. I'm pretty short, but Kelly went from long to really short. She had very short hair. And I didn't even recognize her at first. I thought it was Darla when I first saw it, yeah. <laughs> but it was Kelly because Kelly had cut her hair before we went to shoot in Venice uh, where I proposed to her over there um, in front of the Rialto Bridge in, in Venice, which was a hell of a trip. Yeah. Can you tell them that American fans want some DVDs? Of <laughs> They haven't released anything in America of the old episodes. but Yeah, but you know, I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why they haven't done that, because um, I went to Belgium. Uh, I was over in Belgium, and then I went down to uh, Amsterdam, and we did a, uh, me and Hunter and uh, Ashley Jones uh, went there for, we were gone for a couple of weeks promoting the DVD releases and everything through Amsterdam and Holland, and uh, they've been doing very well. I don't, I, they just haven't put them out here, so I, I don't know. I know that you can, I think you can go online and get them. Um, I've uh, got them, but you have to have a, Player that will play it that region. So. Oh yeah, yeah it's that's difficult. True. It's and not it's, easy. It's, and I'm sure it's in a different language as well because we're dubbed in quite you know 140 languages. <laughs> so, I speak yeah. 140 languages. <laughs> Is it wow, fun to watch talented. yourself with the other <laughs> languages? It's pretty weird to watch yourself. We were watching some scenes today. I was up in the makeup room, jacking around with Moss, Ron, and. Um, a couple of these new kids that we got, and uh, there was a scenes with me and Donna when Donna was trying to seduce me to get back at uh, Stephanie, and it was in German, and uh, we were all <laughs> cracking up because it's so. I mean, when you watch it, they are so good at dubbing it. These actors that they hire, um, and they, you know, they're they're also very famous. These actors that do our voices, um, and uh, they they do such a great job. It literally looks like you're actually speaking German or you know Spanish or Italian. I love French. I really love. Um, but it, it's really amazing. As a matter of fact, the guy who dubbed Rich for 22 years or 20 years died, and it was a big oh. big uh, deal. It was in all the papers and all the magazines and everything all over Europe that who is going to replace the voice of Rich? It was a really big thing. Because, um, you know, you get used to hearing it, you know, the guy that was playing Ridge. And, and well, they found somebody that uh, sounds just like him, thank goodness. But it was a, we were laughing about it because it was, I mean, they made a big deal out of it. <laughs> I was just at a fan event for uh, some of the Young and Restless cats. I had to have somebody move all my stuff out from New York. And uh, <laughs> so I go in, my first scene is with Macy in my office. We're having Chinese food. And uh, we're, you know, we're a good three weeks ahead of schedule, right? So I start watching the show, and I'm watching Jeff Tractor. And then so, you know, on Monday, Jeff Tractor's in there, and he's kissing Macy, who is playing Thorn at the time, eating Chinese food. And then Tuesday, <laughs> I'm kissing Macy, eating Chinese food, and it says the role will now be played by Windsor Harmon. And it just goes directly from him to me, eating Chinese food, kissing Macy, all in <laughs> back to back. Oh, it's the craziest thing. Was that was that uh, difficult to take over another role? It was extremely like difficult. Yeah, it's extremely difficult to step in and take over a role because, first of all, the, you know the role had been played for seven years. It, the character had been developed, um, and and you don't get the opportunity to go in and to really develop the character yourself. And and that's one thing that I I love. I, I the thing about it as an actor, you've got to do your homework. And Brad Pitt said this the other night. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, was watching the actor's studio. 
and he was talking about that, is that you've got to do your homework. And when you, but when you take over a role, the homework's been done. I mean, they, you know, the, the role is expected to be played a certain way, and I had to go upstairs. I had to get the 10th anniversary book that was just coming out and literally read that thing from front page to back page and to understand every single character on the show, my relationship with every single one, why that relationship exists, and but yet I also, you know, had to play him in a certain way. And, you know, I, I'm a leading actor, and I'm playing a supporting actor on this show, and, you know, I have to follow these guidelines of being second to Rich always. He's, you know, it's a second child syndrome. Uh, even though now we know that I am the heir to the throne of Forrester, um, <laughs> as I call it, Forrester Creations is the throne. <laughs> um, even though I am the true, you know, uh, uh, first blood of uh, Eric Forrester. Um, but there, you know, I had to follow a certain way to play it for the first few years, and it was very difficult for me because I would have to go, wait, that's, that's not what this that character would do. Um, but so what I did was I started molding him after his mother, because when you're, you know, if you're being the second child, the second child, and you're not getting the attention, you don't feel like you're getting the love, you have a tendency in real life to gravitate to that individual, and and you want to be like them more, and and it's it, it's really it happens a lot of times when there's when there's violence in a family and a child is being, you know, abused, the child has a tendency to, to cling to the person that's abusing them. Um, so that's where I drew from, and, and, you know, I get my anger from Stephanie, um, and, you know, don't take any, you know, crap from, from people anymore, and that's the change that, that Brad wanted to make with the character and be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rich, but you still have to find that fine little line where, you know, you're going to wind up not winning, <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. she wins well, a lot, I, I guess. Well, um... Well, it's a it's a perpetual complaint among fans that there's not enough yeah. Thorn, not enough of Felicia. Uh, you've been very gracious about it, um, but how can we fans? What can we fans do to get more of you on our screen? You know what? You have to hit the CBS anything. boards. You got to hit the bold and the beautiful boards, the CBS boards, and and stuff like that. Because Brad does, you know, he does listen to it. But um, you know, uh, it, it's not all their fault. You have to understand too. You know, I, as actors, I love you know doing other things and, and, and movies and, and, you know, I do want to, you know, I do want to do other stuff. I want to do other shows. I want to do nighttime dramas. I love dramas. I, you know, I want to, you know, there's a lot of shows out there. I would love to do Criminal Minds. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. So it's not just, it's not just them. I'm, um, I'm in a very happy place. I don't work, you know, four or five days a month, which is just enough to, you know, keep me living. <laughs> Uh -huh, able, yeah. It's enabled me to go out and do other things. But, you know, the thing about it is that's that's my home. It's been my home. I'm not going to another show. They know that. Um, and we have a very good, uh, you know, relationship. Um, and, you know, Brad, I'm, I'm close to Brad. Brad and I have done a lot of things together. We've traveled together and stuff. And, uh, you know, I go up in his office and say, hey, you know, I think we should try this and this. And he's, he's receptive about it. But, you know, the thing about it is, you know, you, we're – You've got to sooner or later turn, you know, you've got to turn the page. And, you know, we're all getting to the age, you know, you know, Ridge and Thorne and Stephanie and Eric, you know, we've got our, our siblings now coming in. And, you know, they've done a beautiful job with these kids, with, with especially with Jackie and Thomas. I mean, Thomas, I, I look mm -hmm. at him on set and Jackie, you know, uh, um, uh, what's his name, Adam, who plays Thomas. I look at those two, and then I'm sitting here, sitting with Ron and, and Hunter, or Ridge Taylor, and it, I, hey, and welcome to WrestleStyle Fan Edition. Uh, this is your host, Douglas. Uh, we're here this week with an exciting guest, and we have a special guest co-host this week, since Joyce isn't with us, uh, Matt, who also is on Twitter at GarbageFan97. Fan is that correct? <laughs> oh, 98, uh, yeah. Uh, um, okay. Obsessed with the band Garbage, if you've heard of them. <laughs> Yes. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. Definitely, definitely follow him as well. And then uh, we have the amazing, talented Thorn Forrester, otherwise played by Windsor Harmon. Welcome, Windsor. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Great to be with you guys. How's it going? Well, pretty good. Pretty good. I they like the band Garbage, today. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Very long day. Really? They, they got a concert a concert in L.A. in a month. So. <laughs> Do they really? You should go. Oh, I love yeah. Garbage, man. <laughs> yeah, great band. 
Um, yeah, it's been a long day. I'm doing all uh, redoing. Uh, I went back and looked at 16 years of scenes that you know one of our producers uh, will mark in a book. Um, shows that are outstanding, you know, that we can use for Emmys and stuff like that. So I, I went through and went downstairs in the editing room and looked at, at uh, all the old scenes and stuff. I mean, all the stuff from when Darla died, from uh, the scenes where uh, uh, Thorne was uh, with Brooke on top of the bed, and then Macy came in, and Brooke was hiding under the bed, and then Macy <laughs> tried to seduce him on top of the bed. And one thing that's really funny that people don't know, you know, I get paid to do that, by the way, guys. Um <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that happened during that uh, during that, that that those scenes was that uh, you know Kelly is a very big uh, uh, loves horses has several horses and, and does long distance races like a hundred mile races and stuff very uh, a skilled rider and we had shot the scenes the day before and then she had to go underneath the bed she comes back the next morning it's a direct pickup she has fallen off her horse that morning and broke her hand so if you oh. saw these scenes. The, the first day, you can see her under the bed with both her hands, and you come back the next day in the next scene, and she's got a cast on her arm. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> caught that. I, I didn't even catch that either. Wow. Yeah, no, a lot of people didn't catch it, but I, I was cracking up today when I saw it. So, <laughs> Brings back memories, I'm sure. I wish I could. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you the memories that it, that it brought back. I mean, it's just all the and stuff. And all the that you had. <laughs> yeah, well, I've kept my. And Sean was huh? there, who played Deacon on Bone the Beautiful and Young and the Restless, and he was yeah. talking about the same thing about the when he went to Italy, uh, they, mm-hmm. they he heard himself being played and and talk, and it, he he couldn't believe how spot on Deacon's voice was to his voice, and yeah, uh, it's cool to hear hear that. Yeah, it is. Well, they take it very seriously, um, and which yeah, is great, and, and what's really cool is that I've met a lot of the guys that do my voice. And it's really cool because they're so excited. I get, you know, I I, I do your voice. I'm, I I do Thorn. I'm Thorn. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's really cool. And and it's funny because one of the guys that does my voice in Spanish is, is about sixty years old and probably weighs about three hundred pounds. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you look at me on camera, then you then you see him. It's really uh, it's hysterical. Uh-huh. Well, we're all beautiful kind of- with the light. Yeah. I guess it kind of sucks though if when you guys change up the actors and stuff, then they <laughs> they kind of well, you know, you know what's really weird is when like when I took over the role, you know, I was up in New York, I just got through doing all my children. When I took over the role, um, I came in and uh, they flew me down and just asked me if I wanted to be a part of the show. That's how I got the job, and I said, well, I, I didn't. And, and the funny thing is, I had never seen an episode of Bold and the Beautiful. I didn't even know anybody on the show. I didn't know one person on the show. And um, so I went to CBS and went upstairs and met with Brad and Bill. Bill Sr. was alive at the time, and, and Chrissy Dooley, who knew me from playing uh, Del Henry and All My Children. And she, uh, you know, they were looking to replace uh, the Thorn, and, and they wanted to make some changes with him. So Christy had mentioned my name to Brad, and they, he saw some stuff, flew me out here, and, and I, just, I just packed an overnight bag, got on a plane, got there. <laughs> And he said, how would you like to come out here and work with us? And I said, well, it's definitely something we could talk about. So I uh, said goodbye, was in the office for about 20 minutes, got in the car, was headed back to my manager's house, and I uh, got there and called him. I said, yeah, it went great. But I said, you know, they were talking to me about uh, working with him. And just as I said that, uh, the uh, secretary for the, my manager comes online and goes, Conrad, it's Ron Weaver from Bold and the Beautiful. And he just hung up on me. So I'm at his my his apartment walking around for 30 minutes going what the hell is going on he called me back and he goes they just made an offer we're negotiating a contract and i went what <laughs> so I, I started work two days later never went back to new york until till the emmys 